All right, good afternoon, folks. Well, we are back at the shop after being out in the tent for a few days. It's starting to get cold, and I've got another project that I'd like to get done. So when I built this office behind me, I built it during the summertime with the intent that I have a place to edit, where I can sit down, have a bigger monitor. But one of the main reasons why I wanted that office was I wanted a way to stay cool during the heat of the summer. When it was 100 degrees out, you know, the computer wouldn't work well, I didn't work well, and so having this office was really nice. But now we're at the end of November. It's no longer hot. It's now really cold, and when I go into that office, I am freezing. So recently, Beaver had reached out and asked if I wanted to review one of the portable diesel heaters, and I went ahead and decided to do so because I thought it might be a good option for heating my small office. Now, I've already gotten the diesel heater out of the box and gotten everything out and looked over the instructions, and everything looks pretty straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed in the office. And once we get that all done, I'm going to talk about one of the bigger challenges that I see a lot of people face with these because they install them or use them in an incorrect way. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get this ready to wire up to 12 volts. I'm going to use my Jackery 2000, the cigarette lighter port on my Jackery 2000 to run this heater in my office. I already have it set up to power other devices, so I might as well go ahead and run this as well. I've already pre-prepped a little cigarette lighter port that I had laying around and I've got a couple leads here. So I've got them marked so I know which one is negative and which one's positive. So I'm just gonna crimp these on and get them uh, set up and then we can go ahead and start prepping my location that I'm gonna put this in. All right, so we're all prepped, ready to go. Now, one concern I do have is they call for 12 volts, 15 amps. Now, I know when these things are running that they really only utilize about three amps, but when the glow plugs come on, that will spike. So my concern is, is that since they are asking for 15 amps, the jack reports only 10 amps at max. So I'm a little bit concerned that when the glow plugs do come on on this, that it will be a little bit too much power and cause the Jackery to reset the port. I'm not 100% sure the Jackery is gonna work for this, but I'm crossing my fingers that it will. All right, so I've taken this thing apart just so that you guys can see what you got inside. So basically you got a typical diesel heater that uh, you can buy separately online inside. And then on the other side you have the 1.3 gallon fuel tank and they got the fuel pump. Now this fuel pump is supposed to be a quieter fuel pump. So I'll be curious to see how it sounds once we actually get this thing fired up. The other reason why I wanted to take the cover and everything off is I'm gonna go ahead and get this exhaust hose and air intake hose connected. They'll connect to the bottom and be able to slide out through this bottom part here. Now the one challenge I am gonna have for today is this is not gonna be long enough for my application because I'm gonna run it through out of the diesel heater, out the wall, and then I want it to go out the actual shop wall so that it exhausts completely outside. Just for uh, installation purposes today and testing and then we can get things set up, I'm just gonna have it come out my office wall and exhaust into the shop. I will have the doors wide open so it should exhaust just fine. But moving forward, I've gone onto Amazon and you can buy this in longer lengths. So once that comes in, I will exhaust it completely out of the shop. All right, so I've gotten this thing back together and I'm gonna get ready to install. One thing I am gonna do is they've got a couple spots where you can mount this to a floor. I'm not gonna mount this to the floor, but I am gonna put a couple two by fours underneath here just to lift this up a little bit. And that's really just gonna be specific to my application. That's just gonna make sure that I can get the diesel up heater off the floor high enough to go through the wall that I'm gonna be going through because it, there's a little cap at the bottom of the wall.
All right, folks, well, we've got everything installed on this diesel heater. And to kind of wrap things up, what I did is I drilled a couple holes through the wall, one for the intake, one for the exhaust. Now, as far as the exhaust one was concerned, I drilled that one a little oversized, and then I made a collar out of some spare sheet metal I had here in the shop. The purpose of that is I want to make sure that the hot exhaust does not lean or rest against the wood wall. So that should keep it nice and safe. And like I said earlier, I've got some longer exhaust tubing coming from Amazon. That way I'll eventually be able to route the exhaust completely out of the building. Now I've been running this diesel heater in the office now for about three days. And the one challenge I have had is running it off of the Jackery 2000. Like I said earlier, the diesel heater is requiring a 15 amp 12 volt port and the Jackery 2000 only puts out 10 amps, which I do think is fairly standard across the board for most of these portable type systems, battery systems that their DC port puts out 10 amps. So that would be one thing I would like to see changed on these portable diesel heaters is if they could make it to where the power consumption was only 10 amps. Now it's only a problem on startup and that's when the glow plugs are firing up. If it's extra cold in the office, that's when I have the most problem. It's usually when it's under 30 degrees Fahrenheit here in the office. I've had some mornings that it's been as low as 14 degrees. And in those cases, I sometimes have to hit the on button three to four times before it finally stays on. Cause what it will do is it will fire up those uh, glow plugs and pull so much power that it ends up tripping the port on the Jackery, shuts off the diesel heater, then I've got to turn it back on again, tries again. Eventually, I think what happens is I just do it enough times that the glow plugs get warm enough that they just start requiring less power to the point where the diesel heater will come on. As it is right now, I don't recommend trying to run one of these on a portable system. And I do recommend to Vivor that maybe they look at making some modifications and get this to run on 10 amps versus 15 amps. Now, as far as the installation, it was pretty straightforward and the manual does have some good pictures and stuff that will help you uh, figure out how you should be doing things. Now, as far as the wording in the manual, I do think Vivor could work on that a little bit better. Maybe get somebody who's a little bit more fluent for the English parts of the manual because I found that really hard to understand because there's like sentence structure and things like that that just seem a little bit out of whack and that made it hard for me to figure out how to set the control panel as far as some of the different modes, even just setting the time, I found a little bit frustrating to figure out. I did figure out how to do all that and there is two modes you can work with with the heater as far as there's a manual mode and an automatic mode. Now the manual mode is pretty straightforward. It's just a setting from one to 10, one being the lowest heat setting, 10 being the highest heat setting. But the automatic mode, because I couldn't really understand what they're telling me, I'm a little bit confused about how that should work. Based on using the heater, I think what basically it does is you can set a temperature of where you want it to get to. And once it gets to that temperature, it will automatically adjust the heat setting down. In order to get to that temperature, it will adjust the heat setting up to get it to that temperature, but it kind of controls the heat setting for you. Never really shuts off once it gets there. Uh, once you get to that temperature, the heater doesn't shut off and then turn back on later once it gets to that temperature. It just lowers down to the lowest setting. That's how I think it's supposed to work, but like I said, in the manual, it's a little bit unclear to me on how that is supposed to work. Now, there is also a functionality in the system where you can set a start time and, and how many hours you want it to run. That was a little bit weird to figure out in the manual as well. And I haven't been able to test that. And that's probably mainly because like I said, sometimes the system just doesn't start on the first go because it kicks off my Jack report. So I haven't ever been able to use that. I've always had to just come in and fire it up myself and kind of go through my little process dealing with the Jackery. But if you were hooked to a 15 amp circuit and the unit was on, you could actually set this up to start at a certain time in the morning and then run for a certain amount of hours and then shut off, which would be handy. 
Now, as far as how well the unit's been working on heating my office, we've had some extremely cold mornings. There's been a couple times I've come in here and it's been like 14 degrees and it's had to heat things up. Unfortunately, I just kind of threw this office together. It's not well insulated and we've got a cement floor that is just radiating uh, cold. So the heater has been doing okay. It can usually on those really extreme mornings, it can get the office up to about 55 degrees. We're a little bit more mild this morning. So it's been able to get the office up to 66 degrees. I am going to try to do a little bit of work and get some more insulation in here. But I do think that this cement floor radiating cold is going to be my biggest challenge, but at least it takes the chill off and I can comfortably sit in here with my jacket and work so i'm happy enough with that when it comes to fuel consumption i don't really have any hard data to share with you guys i would say with based on the three to four days that i've been using the system i've been getting about seven to eight hours of fuel out of the system like i said it's basically half the run on its highest setting the whole time because of my office being poorly insulated so you might be able to take that in consideration now, one of the things that's always been annoying about diesel heaters is the pump noise. The little fuel pump makes like a, a pretty loud, like knocking click, click, click noise. And they did advertise this as being quieter, but to be honest, based on other diesel heaters that I have heard, I don't feel like this one is really any quieter than the typical diesel heater. All right, so at the beginning of the video, I told you guys I talked about one of the biggest mistakes that I see when people are trying to use one of these portable diesel heaters. And that is, is they'll put the actual unit outside instead of having it inside the space that they're trying to heat. The challenge with that is being in a heat exchanger, you're sucking in cold air, and then that's getting heated and then coming out as warm air out your exhaust port. If you put it outside, you're always gonna be pulling in the cold ambient air from the outside. If you have it inside, as the heater is heating up the space, that air coming into the unit is also gonna get warmer, meaning that you're going to be able to run the heater at a lower temperature setting in order to maintain the space. If you have it outside, since it's always pulling in colder air, it's always gonna to have to run harder in order to get warm air out the exhaust. So it's just gonna make the unit less efficient. The other big challenge that you're gonna find is if it's extremely cold, you may run into the problem of your diesel gelling inside the machine and then you're gonna have a real problem because the machine's not gonna come on at all until you can warm it up enough to get that diesel flowing again. The machine itself, the diesel heater itself, should be inside the space with the air intake and the exhaust going outside of your space. <clears throat> now the challenge with that is gonna be for you people that want to use tents, use these in a tent or a rooftop tent, where the exhaust would have to go pass through some type of material, that's obviously gonna offer some challenges for you to get set up or come up with a workaround to make that work. Not impossible, but again, because of that, I don't think it's an ideal choice. Now, as far as if you're putting it in something that has hard sides like a van, uh, a workroom, a shed, uh, anything like that, I think that this could work fine and be good for that. Now, one of the other cons, like I said, is the pump is noisy. So if again, if you're trying to use this inside a tent, you're gonna have this thing right next to you and you're gonna be listening to that pump all night. It can be rhythmic at times, but if you have it on the automatic setting, it does kind of come up and down and change in pitch. So that might be annoying. So if you are gonna have it inside, you might wanna choose the manual setting where it'll just kind of be consistent and then maybe with the ticking you won't it won't bother you. The other downside is obviously it does require some installation. With the portable one, it the installation is pretty easy and all you really have to do is find a way to get that intake and exhaust and then find yourself some kind of uh, 12 volt power. So it is a fairly easy installation as far as things go but there is insulation involved. So if you're looking for a way to heat your tent or your van or something like that, you just wanna keep that in mind that there is gonna be a certain amount of insulation. All right, folks, well, that brings us to the end of this video. I don't know that having a diesel heater in my office to heat it is the most efficient way, but I definitely have been appreciating the extra warmth on these cold mornings while I edit these videos. If you found this video useful, please do give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those down below and we'll catch you guys again outside.